Today I want to talk about female infidelity, in particular the claims that female infidelity has been on a significant rise in recent decades. And that may or may not be true. That's to be examined somewhat later. But in particular, I want to go into the details as to why this is purportedly happening. And in order to do that, I need to read a little bit off of an article from which much of this is drawn. Now, before proceeding, I would strongly recommend to you that you read the article yourself. It's very, very informative as to what's going on. But I want to read off the bits of what I think capture the essence of this phenomenon of alleged increase of female infidelity. Now, for the record, the article is about two and a half years old, but still contemporary. I think it's a very safe assumption to assume the things described here are ongoing and continue in the current years, they say. Furthermore, the article is based on the research of a quote-unquote psychoanalyst, a female, who interviewed various women as the reasons why they were doing these things, that is, having affairs and cheating on their husbands. So the context is questions that are posed to her female friends and other people she's spoken to. These questions first occurred to me a few years ago when I began to wonder how many of my friends were actually faithful to their husbands. From a distance, they seemed happy enough, or at least content. Like me, they were doing the family thing. They had cute kids, mortgages, busy social lives, matching sets of dishes. On the surface, their husbands were reasonable. The marriage is modern and equitable. If these women friends were angry, unfulfilled, or resentful, they didn't show it. Then one day, one of them confided in me that she'd been having two overlapping affairs over the course of five years. Almost before I finished processing this, another friend told me that she was 100% faithful to her husband, except when she was out of town for work each month. Not long after, another told me that while she had never had sex with another man, she'd had so many emotional affairs and inappropriate email correspondences over the years that she'd had to buy a separate hard drive to store them all. What surprised me most about these conversations was not that my friends were cheating, but that many of them were so nonchalant in the way they were describing their extramarital adventures. There was deception, but little secrecy or shame. Often they loved their husbands, but felt in some fundamental way that their needs, bracketed sexual, emotional, psychological, were not being met inside the marriage. Some even wondered if their husbands knew about their infidelity, choosing to look away. Quote, the fact is, one of these friends told me, I'm nicer to my husband when I have something special going on that's just for me. She found that she was kinder, more patient, less resentful, and this is a direct quote, less of a bitch. It occurred to me that these women were describing infidelity not as a transgression, but a creative or even subversive act, a protest against an institution they'd come to experience as suffocating or oppressive. In an earlier generation, this might have taken the form of separation or divorce. But now, it seemed, more and more women were unwilling to abandon their marriages and families they've built over years or decades. They were unwilling to bear the stigma of a publicly open marriage or to go through the effort of negotiating such a complex arrangement. These women were turning to infidelity not as a way to explode a marriage, but as a way to stay in it. Whereas conventional narratives of female infidelity so often posit the unfaithful woman as a passive party, the women I talked to seemed in control of their own transgressions. There seemed to be something new about this approach. And it goes on and on. Again, very information-dense article. It will be linked in the low bar, but I suggest you read it. You do, however, get from the excerpt I read a sense of what's going on. Now, it's claimed at the beginning of the article that infidelity in general is on the rise in women compared to previous decades. And I think we need to first examine that claim. Because infidelity, although it's not illegal, is something that people, generally speaking, don't think is okay in most cases. And we have this very, very pernicious issue of self-reporting. Being honest about things that are frowned upon or that are not encouraged by society at large, well, we have to be very careful about people making these claims because, frankly speaking, they could be lying, they could be withholding information, they could be embellishing, although I think the embellishing part is unlikely. Because here's the thing, you have to think about this in a certain way. There's a difference between legal and illegal and frowned upon and supported. So as an example, nobody I think in his right mind would endorse rampant alcoholism. Nobody would say that's a good thing. It's a good thing that you're getting wasted every night. It's legal. You're allowed to do that. But bragging about that and telling everyone about that is not something that's going to get you a lot of kudos, I think. And I think this is a similar phenomenon here. 
Self-reporting is notoriously unreliable in just about every social metric you can imagine. If the stats here are claimed to be 40%, my assumption here is it's probably a little bit higher, and there are a number of reasons for assuming this. Number one, women, for better or worse, are better, as a rule, at covering up their affairs than men are. This has been going on for quite some time. And number two, when we observe various human phenomena, such as domestic abuse, we generally see parity. Now, it's not necessarily the case that you have to assume that there's going to be parity in gender behavior. You can look at professions, and we don't see that parity. But the idea that something so core, that is infidelity, would be something perpetrated more often by men, I'm a little bit skeptical of. One, again, for the reason cited that women are much better at covering these things up. And two, since the rise of birth control, and this is the key factor here, women have had more freedom, liberty, and flexibility in having affairs if they so choose. So my ultimate conclusion here is that we probably can't get accurate data on the number of people cheating, whether it's men or women. But I think it is a safe assumption that some kind of parity exists between men and women. Maybe not 50-50, but something approximating that. Now, if you read between the lines here, you'll notice that the calculus these women are making is, in my estimation, their own version of cheaper to keep him. Now, it's very unlikely they would lose everything in a divorce battle. But it is cited as being very difficult to disrupt and dissolve a marriage of several decades because it's a lot of work and all the things you built on it. But the recurrent theme you always see when it comes to women and marriage is that there's some fundamental element in there that makes them dissatisfied. When women note that something's not perfect or something's lacking, then they project that onto the totality of the relationship or marriage. And so here we on display these marriages that are more or less functional, decent enough, but something's missing. Whereupon these women seem to post hoc rationalize themselves to justify their actions of having an emotional affair or an actual affair over a long period of time because that's what gives them that extra kick, that thrill. As the woman herself self-reported, she is easier to get along with and quote unquote less of a bitch. And this is all they really need to justify much of this. And remember with women, their own feelings, their own quote unquote lived experiences are the things that justify their worldview. So it's perfectly okay to cheat, it's perfectly okay to have these affairs, because to their own mind, to their own quote-unquote heart, they're lacking something in their relationships and marriages. They need something extra, and they can only get this extra thing by having affairs and cheating on their husbands. Now, of course, this is a completely wacky view of the world, but remember, there's a kind of solipsism light when it comes to women. Women like to project their own feelings into the world. It's mostly self-referential, and they can't look at the whole. So when they do look at a relationship, they see the things that are missing for them. Now, if you go further down the article, you'll also see that women are complaining about division of labor in the home and how the husbands don't do enough. Of course, they leave out the very, very likely fact that these husbands are busting their asses at work for dozens and dozens and dozens of hours each week, coming home exhausted, presumably, but omitting that convenient fact, they're talking about how they're disappointed that the husbands don't do enough, which is a universal claim. Well, to that, I'll just say, how many of these women want to swap out the housework for the 70 to 80 hour work week some of their husbands are doing? And I think very few of them indeed. I think they would much prefer to turn dials in a washing machine and physically put plates and utensils in an automatic dishwasher. What do you think? So what we really see on display here is a kind of brazenness to their own activities. And the reason why they're so brazen about it is, one, the reason cited before, the fine line at times between legality and illegality versus the ethical versus the unethical. It's perfectly legal to have an affair in most Western countries. You can't really be penalized. You can't go to jail for it. There's some countries where that's still true, but not in Western countries. But it's frowned upon. Even in light of that activity being frowned upon, these women feel completely justified by their own emotions and their own desires and own feelings. Now, at this stage, need I remind you that the equivalent as an excuse or a justification to cheat on your spouse, on your wife as a man, would never, never in a thousand million years be accepted. Can you imagine a man being interviewed by some psychoanalyst about the reason why he's having secret affairs on the side. He might say something like, well, I'm really happy in the marriage, but she's not sucking my dick well enough anymore. And in fact, she never did. Everything was okay, but that one element, that blow job was just missing. So I needed to find a piece of ass that would suck my dick until the cows came home. How many people would buy that as an excuse? 
No, he would be termed a horrendous monster by the public and certainly by women. But women, lacking the one thing or the two things they don't have in their marriage, allegedly, they can have affairs, they can do whatever they want. It's about the thrill. A man could never do any of this. And again, we see the hypocrisy on display, nothing new here. But here's the thing, and the scary, scary thought behind all of this. The brazenness, the openness, the nonchalance, as the author herself cites, of all these activities, these extramarital affairs, is frightening. Because, again, looking at that fine line between the legal and the ethical, what would women not do were something deemed legal but not ethical? Imagine a world, for example, where robbery, looting, and arson weren't considered crimes. And in that world, it was frowned upon. But there's nothing wrong with, say, breaking into a Target store and stealing televisions and electronics equipment. It was deemed perfectly acceptable. In that world, a lot more people would do it, wouldn't they? And for whatever reason, if it were deemed acceptable to stab your husband just because you didn't like him on a particular day, maybe only in the thigh or in the buttocks, maybe someone would do that too because they would find some reason to justify it to themselves. And this is the problem. If you're not adhering to some overarching ethical code and everything is driven by your own wants and desires, what world do you live in? Well, it's a world driven by fear. I guarantee you that much of this would be kept under wraps. They certainly wouldn't admit it if it were illegal. And if there were harsh penalties for this sort of thing, they probably wouldn't be doing it in the numbers they're doing it. But again, if you give license to people broadly, and specifically women, to do certain things, they will do it. These women being scribed feel perfectly justified in what they're doing because the world owes them something. And more importantly, their marriages owe them something. The reverse can never be true, ever. It's not as if marriage owes a man anything. He just needs to slave away until he drops dead. But the woman, that's a different story. And I think this also shines a very bright light on this solipsism light that you see on display here in many, many women. The idea that this is all acceptable because something is missing. Does every woman do this? Of course not. But the fact that so many of them do this, in increasing numbers, it's alleged, is very insightful and interesting, and it tells you quite a bit about female psychology. It's the desire to keep the good things that she has without losing out on the things that she wants, and she gets the things that she wants outside of the marriage. It's a kind of pseudo-compromise on the cheaper to keep her. It's keep the marriage, not necessarily him, keep the symbolism of the marriage, the things intact, and get all the extra stuff on the side, and you're good to go. Anyway, gentlemen, I hope you're well in hail in these trying times. As always, may the gods watch over you, and if I'm still alive, I will check you out later. You enjoy the beginning of this hideous, hideous summer that I know will be hideous because it's summer, and summer is absolutely horrific, and who likes the hot weather? Take care. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.